Speedrunning world records. Some see it as a grandiose, huge accomplishment. Ah! Ah! World record, guys! World fucking record! Yes! 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 Woo! Some see it as just another day. Five, four, oh. Well, that's pretty easy. Some even see it as a disappointment or an annoyance, depending on the circumstances. What? Oh. Fuck you. Oh my god. I don't know if 1x was alive, but if it was, it was just killed. This probably isn't even a world record. I don't even know. I'm not. I don't have the splits up. I don't know. I don't know. Was it? Wow, my God! I killed one X to pillar room. Are you serious? Ah, oh, fuck, dude. But at the end of the day, it still is a world record. Out of everyone in the world that has ever tried, it's the fastest run out there, and most of the time, it's pretty hard to get one. But for someone who's never done a speedrun before, what game has the easiest, most achievable world record? Well today, that's what we're going to find out. But before I start, I gotta set some ground rules. Now you could just go to speedrun.com, sort games by least runs, upload a first playthrough, pay off a mod, and get that coveted first place trophy on your profile. But that would be too easy. So instead, I'm going to sort games by most active and only consider the main categories from the first page or so which are the top 50 most active speed games right now. And you heard that right, I said main categories. No barely contested category extensions or dead games here. Also, I'm only considering the games that are labeled full releases by speedrun.com. This will exclude things like category extensions and certain modes in games like Hypixel Bed Wars. This will also exclude every single Roblox game because technically they're just games inside of a game engine. Now with all of that out of the way, let's get searching. These are all the games that I'll be looking at. They're the top 50 speed games as of recording this video, which was actually late October. So if there's some new fad game that popped up, please don't kill me. <clears throat> anyway, but it is a lot to go through. So I'm going to knock out the first wave of games right now. Damn, that's a lot of them gone. Why is that? Well, that's because lots of popular speed games have large dedicated communities that have worked for years to cut their times down. And coming in as a new player and trying to do what they do is almost impossible. You'd have to spend weeks, maybe months, to get to the level that some of these players are on. I speak from experience when I say that after spending over a thousand hours and two years playing Portal 1, I'm nowhere near getting a world record. Almost no game that has a community this dedicated are going to have any free world records by any means. That being said, there are a few games remaining, so let's see what they are. Inside the Backrooms is one of the more popular Backrooms indie games, and naturally, some people have decided to speedrun it. But I'm not talking about it right now because it's an easy speedrun, but because the leaderboards are pretty empty. Now I'm not saying the game is dead, it still has 70 active players and most runs were submitted within the past month of me recording this. But those players aren't playing a majority of the categories since out of the astronomical 108 that the game has, only 30 have a single run on the leaderboards. That is insane! I don't think I've ever seen a game with this many unclaimed world records before. And getting one would suffice as the easiest world record, but I'm not counting it. It's no different than finding a game with zero players and uploading a first playthrough. It just so happens that this game is one of the top speed games in the world right now. So on a technicality, Inside the Backrooms is not going to cut it for what we're looking for. Subway Surfers is the most ran speed game of all time. How the hell did that happen? Well, you can blame the Brazilians. <laughs> okay, maybe, maybe don't keep that in. I don't know too much about this as someone who isn't in the loop, but from what I can gather, the game got really popular with Brazilian TikTok, and then several creators started to make speedrun content around it, with that content also getting insanely popular. I don't do it justice. If you want more details, I recommend watching Storcer's video on it that I'll have linked below. Anyway, how is the speedrun easy? Well, several of the main categories include obtaining a power-up. The power-ups differ, but all of them seem to have an earliest spawn point from what I can gather. Now I don't know how rare it is to spawn there, but one guy, whose name I'm not even going to try to pronounce, has all the world records for it. So he either grinds a lot, or is doing something different that I have no knowledge of. 
other than that, the other world records are out of reach simply because of the sheer number of runners at any given time. You have more competition than any other speed game in history, as well as most of the community speaking Portuguese, essentially region locking a lot of the knowledge. So not only do you have endless competition, but trying to obtain the strategies necessary would be a chore. Hence why I wouldn't call Subway Surfers the easiest, even with its RNG dependency. Also, fun fact, its most popular category, No Coins, has its leaderboards reversed since the goal of it is to go the longest without getting any coins. The only other game that I could find that does this is another Endless Runner, Temple Run, with its own No Coins category. It's a funny reversal from what speedrun leaderboards normally are. It was definitely odd when I saw it. Now this is where we get to the games that have 100% RNG dependent categories with multi-tied world records. Not only that, but the runs are so simple at this point that they don't even require more than some clicks or taps to get. That being said though, these games aren't made equal. There still is an easiest speedrun. So let's keep going down the list with... Satera is a collection of geography based trivia games that I actually play myself sometimes because I find geography pretty fun. Now the simplest category by far is world continents, since you only need to click the continents, which there are only 7 of. The tricky part is getting the luck necessary to complete the run. Each time you start, the order of the continents you need to click are randomized, making most of your runs fail. And since you have to get a perfect score for the run to be submittable, this makes the RNG even more brutal. So what are the chances of you getting all continents in one go? 1 in 823,543. Huh. That's a problem. You'd be grinding out runs for dozens of hours on average just to get a shot at world record. And not just that, but you have to do these 7 clicks in 1 second, which isn't too hard input wise, but if you drop the ball and misclick on the one run where your luck is good, you could be doing runs for days more without the proper RNG. So that's that, right? Well, not exactly. You see, that's the web version of the category, but the desktop version actually doesn't include Antarctica in the quiz, meaning you only have to click 6 continents. This raises our odds of completing a run exponentially to about 1 in 46,656. Still not the best odds, but much better than what we had before. Plus, this brings the number of clicks down from 7 to 6, making it a bit easier to get it in one second. However, there still are easier world records to get that don't even involve clicking multiple times. I'll be honest, before I started writing the script, I thought Minesweeper would be the easiest world record by a far margin. I mean, you can technically beat the game in one click, right? How much easier can you get? Well, as I came to find out, it wasn't that simple. After some admittedly very rudimentary research, it turns out that a one-click board is a very rare anomaly in Minesweeper, so much so that it shouldn't even be possible. In the older versions, there are about four boards total that can technically solve in one click. The chance of getting one of these boards is around the ballpark of 1 in 800,000, but they all fall victim to the one-click bug. The game doesn't expect the first click to be the last click, so it just doesn't stop the timer. In the newer versions, however, this apparently doesn't apply, and the version used in this speedrun is one of those newer versions. To my knowledge, almost no research has been done into the newer versions regarding a one-click win. The only thing I could find were a couple of Reddit threads saying that the chance of getting one were about 1 in 250,000, but this number isn't conclusive. It's still a mystery whether a one-click game is even possible in the newer versions. There is this video by Zero Circle showing him getting a one-click win on the Windows 7 version, but I have no way of knowing whether it's fake or not. Regardless, the chances of you getting this is so low that despite it being only one click, it wouldn't be worth resetting for in the slightest. And now we've come to the final two. Which of these has the easiest speedrun world record? Both, actually. Well, kinda. Let me explain first with Crossy Road. There's only one category that you can beat in one click, and that's Death Percent. The leaderboard is a bit weird here though. All the top runs have the same strategy of jumping into the side of a car or truck on their first jump. They all do the same thing, so why don't they all have the same time? Honestly, I don't know. There are no character, stage, or car consistencies between top runs or even world record runs compared to non-world record runs. Some runners seemingly lose time arbitrarily, which is super weird. It's probably some super minute detail that I'm missing, but I can't spot it. Now moving on to Minecraft Classic, which actually has a couple of categories to pick from. Break Coal, Break Iron, and Break Gold are all multi-tied and possible to do in a millisecond. This is because time starts on first input, 
but ends when you break the block, ending and starting the run on the same input. Spawning while facing iron is the most rare, with only 3 people in a world record tie, while gold and coal have 18 people and 14 people respectively. The next category is reach water, where time ends when you touch water, obviously. You get the world record if you just simply spawn in water, and you'll join the mind-numbingly high number of 145 other people sharing that record with you. That's insane, and the most people tied for a world record I've ever seen. But believe it or not, it gets crazier. This next category is the easiest speedrun world record. Take a guess as to how many people you think are tied for it. 200? 350? Maybe even 500? 1,027. That is how many people are tied for the Break Dirt world record at one millisecond. I can't even describe in words how insane that is. You get a bit lucky on Minecraft Classic and be included in the biggest world record tie in speedrunning history. Not bad for a single click. I really hope you enjoyed. If you did, leave a like and maybe even consider subscribing if you want to see more videos like this. This was a bitch to research, but it was fun nonetheless. Oh god, this video edit's gonna be such a nightmare. <laughs> I'll leave it for future me. Until next time, see ya.